Fears of the unknown coupled with unpredictable world events can easily trigger stress and that can lead to severe damage to your physical health. Dr. Frida Fisher is the owner and president of Midtown Atlanta Nephrology and she has some surprising information on the effects of stress and some tips most importantly about what to do about it. She joins us live tonight. Uh, good evening. Thanks so much for being here. Um, so you have five ways and some of them are pretty surprising that stress affects our health. Let's go through them one by one. Let's start first with high blood pressure. High blood pressure, yes, which is a leading cause of heart disease, strokes, kidney disease, can be exacerbated by stress. What happens is the stress causes a release of hormones like cortisol, adrenaline. This causes blood vessels to tighten and can lead to high blood pressure. So that is one way stress can affect your physical health. Okay, the second is headaches and low productivity. I recognize both, both of those things when you think about uh, all of the effects that stress have on you. Talk about that. Yes, yeah, so when you experience stress, you can have a tightening or contraction of the muscles in your scalp, your upper back, your neck, and this can lead to tension headaches. And when you're trying to be productive in your daily life and in work and you have headaches, it decreases your productivity. So stress can lead to headaches and a decrease in productivity. And no also, good news. also back pain and neck pain, right? Absolutely. All related? All related to the contraction of those muscles. Okay, the, the third one is weight gain. The feared weight gain. Who feels like gaining weight? No one. But if you're stressed, you increase a hormone in your body called cortisol. Now, first off, being stressed often causes people to eat comfort foods. And what are those? Foods that are high in fats and sugar and carbs. And when you have this increased stress hormone of cortisol, it causes you to hold on to your fat. Not in places where you may want to hold on to it, but you hold on to it in your face, your upper back in your abdomen. And so this can happen from stress. You get cortisol, you hold on to weight, and you gain it in ways that may not be so attractive to you. It just gets better and better. Uh, the fourth <laughs> one is, is a weakened immune system. That one's actually not surprising. Exactly. And in this time of pandemic and monkeypox and who knows what else, we all need to have our best immunity. But when you are stressed, again, those stress hormones can cause a suppression or a decrease in your disease fighting white blood cells like your lymphocytes. And this can cause you to have a weakened immune system, be sicker for longer or even more severely. All and then all of these things lead to more stress. The fifth one though is really surprising actually, literally a broken heart. Talk about that. Yes, there is something called broken heart syndrome or stress cardiomyopathy, also Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. And we've often heard the cliche, oh, you know, he died of a broken heart, but it can really happen. When you release the stress hormones of adrenaline and noradrenaline, this can cause the tiny blood vessels to tighten and a certain portion of the heart, the apex, can not pump properly. And so patients can have chest pain, shortness of breath, even when they have no history of heart disease, even when they have clean heart arteries or coronary arteries. So you can literally have broken heart syndrome from being stressed. That's so sad. And we hear these stories about, you know, elderly couples who first one goes and then right afterwards another one goes because of a heart condition or something. Uh, it, they really are sad stories, but it's actually scientifically true. Okay, now let's get to uh, what are some tips to actually help reduce the stress? How do we avoid all of these things? Yes, let's get some solutions. So exercise is one. And the American Heart Association recommends that most people have 150 minutes of moderate exercise each week. If you exercise, that can help to release endorphins, help to get your mind in a better place and decrease stress. You also want to meditate. And meditation is not just sitting in a corner and thinking about your things to do lists. You want to meditate where you clear your mind and you decrease your stress. And so those are some of the ways also, you want to have good time management. If you are places, you get to places late, that's stress. If you have too many things on your plate and you have not realistically divided them up, that's stress. You want to divide your time properly and make sure that you get enough sleep. Sleep deprivation can lead to stress, and so you want to get sleep. And most importantly, learn how to tell people no. So many people want to be superwoman or superman and be everything to everyone, but you cannot. And so you have to learn how to tell people no, how to delegate, and to ask for help if you need it. Really good information, really good tips. Some of them we don't even think about at all. And so relevant right now, probably to everyone who is watching. Dr. Frida Fisher, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.